Hello, my name's Simon Moore and I'm the CTO of Pukui Limited and I'm going to share with you our latest iteration of our solution for BP. Now there are notes to the left and I'm not going to read all those. I'll leave you to stop the video and have a look at it at your leisure. Now we're proposing a helical jam, which is a pretty simple deal. Let me explain what it is. You make a spring too big. That doesn't actually fit the pipe. Then you wind it and you make it smaller. So it does fit the pipe. Then you take it down to the seabed and you put it in the pipe. Now you do that in this case by having everything hollow and a very heavy weight. And the role of the, of the um, ROVs is simply to nudge it and um, to give a good view of what's going on. You're just sort of lining it up. That's what they're doing. So once it's in there, what you do is you pull a pin or release detail. ROVs do that. And then... Um, it's a spring form, it's a helical form, and it'll want to unwind. It'll it'll want to change back to where it was originally. So if it'll if it's been wound smaller, it'll unwind, get bigger, and jam against whatever's there. And in this case, it's the inside surface of an oil pipe. Now, additionally, you can actually make it stronger. I won't go into that at the moment. Now we've been on TV, and I'll leave you to have a look at these if you wish. Um, they have quite a good the TV program was quite a good summary, and there's a, a way to find it there on YouTube down below. And indeed, we've we've had a bit of fun with just testing uh, the power of a slinky, trying to uh, tow a, <laughs> a tree with a car, and having a tug of war with a couple of cars. So sort of lightweight fun, but nevertheless, behind it all is serious science, serious science that shows that. Um, something that you wouldn't expect completely over delivers and that is a plastic slinky 40 cents American and there's the specifications of the slinky <laughs> right now one of our key advantages is that a lot of the processes and, and work can be done before it's taken down there and uh, really what you're doing is you're putting it in there and letting it go so um, you can come back to this at your leisure I'll move on Here's an internal view. As you can see, it's pretty slender. In fact, it probably could be a lot more slender than this. Um, there are two part, two, two key parts there. Obviously, the internal structural element and uh, the, the the main the main bit, if you like, is the uh, helical bit on the outside. Sealing can be done in a bunch of ways, actually. There's about three or four ways it could be done. Now, we've made some metal samples as well, playing around with plastic slinkies. And, um, you know, we, we made one from get to go in, uh, in the morning, so... It was admittedly one nineteenth scale, so <laughs> it was a bit small. But nevertheless, large machinery. Uh, this is a basically a lathe job and um, spring steel or, or some other high tensile steel. Um, rubber, suitable for marine environment. And uh, some sort of release detail, or, you know, holding and release detail. You'd obviously have valving on it. Now I could run through this, um, but I won't. Um, some of these have been touched on um, in previous slides and will be probably in the next couple of slides. The key point though is number eight. What we've got is something which is very site suitable. It's something that can be pre-assembled, taken down, let go, and uh, the force required by the ROVs um, is rather minimal. Now, to the left there, um, there is a note about, um, about what you could connect to with a pipe at the bottom of the sea. And... Just recently we've realised that the inside of the pipe really is not being considered at all. And um, I think the latest thing is that the next version is going to, to try to remove the flange, which obviously would be very easy if you could actually get, uh, to it, get to it in a normal way on the surface of a ship. But you can't. So, what are we doing? We are locking something using friction, elasticity, and it's a surface area deal and we're using spring form now actually all these things are pretty normal so um we've got here some problems that people have presented and some answers but i just really want to address that general notion that what we're doing here is we're using physics as our friend friction is everywhere if you walk along the street you're using friction if you clap your hands you're using friction if you write on a piece of paper you're using friction um, if you stop a car, you're using friction. If you if you corner, you're using friction. Springs, 
They're in pens. They're in beds. They're in cars. They're in trains. Um, a paperclip is a type of spring. You know, um, the spring in a car that operates the valves can go a billion times in the life of a car, apparently. So look, what, uh, my point here is that what we're using is friction and elasticity and spring character and so forth. These are normal things, but we're just using them in a slightly sneaky way. The sneaky way is that we're designing everything so it doesn't fit and, um, <laughs> and basically using that to our advantage. Now, um, I hesitated about putting this slide in, but I think it needs to be said. Um, well, first of all, BP didn't really put out a, a wish list, and we've been designing blind, which has been a bit of a problem. So here we are three or four weeks into it, and we now have a much better sense of what we're designing to. But just a couple of days I came upon this, and, and it is a bit of a concern, really. It would appear that um, BP might have closed their mind to the inside of the pipe. Um, now, it doesn't so obviously say anything about helical form in there, but... Nevertheless, um, that insertion of balloons that is stents or plugs into the riser um, is not possible, not feasible. That is clearly not true. And um, I would invite BP to um, have an open mind here. Um, you know, as a person who works in design and technology all the time, one of the things that's very clear to me is that uh, the solution is obvious once you've thought of it. And it's not obvious beforehand. So, um, yep, please, <laughs> I would invite you to have a really good look at helical jam technology. Now, we've done a bit of a comical calculation on the side here, but it does suggest that something's going on. We know that the helical slinky um, can support about a quarter of a tonne. In fact, you know, it does that pretty easily. It doesn't do two tonne as we tried. <laughs> but nevertheless, the tiny little section that it is and the cheap plastic that it is, can do a quarter of a ton and if you do a bit of scaling on this because a helical jam assembly is a basically a surface area deal um, so it's a it's a it's a straight linear relationship and if you do a bit of scaling and also a bit of scaling on the material even if you don't improve the design um, you it would appear that a helical jam assembly in the scale or that is needed for the bp pipe can support a load of two thousand ton so I think we can do it. Right, well that's it. I'm Simon Moore and Dan and I would be delighted to have a chat. Um, this is our space. Helixes, friction, elasticity. Um, you know, we've got a bunch of things going on and hose connection, fasteners, and we're basically applying stuff. We didn't even have to file a patent here. And But look, this, this is not about patents and stuff. This is really about helping you guys solve what is a terrible problem. So give us a shout. We'd be delighted to help. Thanks for that.